Even though Pluto was demoted in 2006, scientists are still interested in learning more about the dwarf planet. To that end, NASA launched the spacecraft New Horizons, which traveled for a very long time before finally entering the planet's orbit in 2015. During the process of taking pictures and sending them home, scientists noticed something unusual. Join us as we discuss this far-off phenomenon and the amazing discoveries NASA has made about Pluto. Before Pluto was demoted in 2006, it was known as the ninth planet in our solar system. It is located in an area called the Kuiper Belt, which is full of many icy planets. When the International Astronomical Union developed guidelines for defining planets, Pluto was eventually deprived of its planet status and is now regarded as the largest of the dwarf planets. Regrettably, Pluto failed to satisfy the third requirement to be categorized as a planet because it had not cleared its orbit of objects of a similar size. Astronomer Peral Eliel hypothesized that a planet other than Neptune or Uranus might be responsible for the perturbations to Neptune and Uranus orbits back in 1905. It's no secret that Pluto is incredibly far from the Sun and is a dark, difficult-to-see object that follows a long, stretched-out path around the center of our solar system, completing one orbit every 248 Earth years. L made a rough estimate of where this planet could be in 1915, but sadly he did not live long enough to see it discovered. Pluto was finally found in 1930 by Clyde Tommy at the LEL Observatory, and its name came from an 11-year-old girl in England named Venetia Burney. She suggested the name Pluto after the Roman god of the underworld to her grandfather who shared it with the Lowell Observatory. It took Pluto until 1989 to approach the Sun at its closest point. After that, it has been moving away, reaching its farthest point in 2113. Because of this distance, Pluto is extremely difficult to see from Earth, and even with telescopes, it appears to be a blurry brown disk with little detail. But you know what doesn't look like a blurry brown disk? RG Gorgeous Little Moon Miniatures Naturally, act quickly and order one for yourself by clicking the link in the description box below. Even though Pluto is far away and difficult to see, studying it properly can be challenging. However, thanks to the New Horizon spacecraft and the 6 gigabytes of data it has collected, NASA has finally realized that Pluto is not what we thought because the probe was unable to orbit the planet and therefore was unable to take pictures of its entire surface. The planet's heart-shaped feature caught everyone's attention and when the probe got up close, scientists discovered that it is actually a massive nitrogen glacier that covers a million square miles. The left side of the heart is called Sputnik Plana and it appears to have forced Pluto's position so that the basin faces its moon. Karen's gravitational pull plus the enormous weight of the glacial glacier created a process known as true polar wander, which resulted in fissures and large flaws on Pluto's surface. In addition to moving closer to Pluto's North Pole, Sputnik Plano was formed in the Northwest and its current location wasn't happenstance. Scientists believe that if more ice accumulates there in the future, Pluto will continue to shift its position. New Horizons data also hinted that there might be a huge liquid ocean under Pluto's surface which could be something like a water ocean. This discovery would make Pluto similar to ocean worlds like Europa, Enceladus, and Titan and considering the tecton. Structures seen in the pictures from New Horizons, it's likely that this theory is true. Scientists believe that around 4 billion years ago, a massive object from the Kuiper Belt smashed into Pluto which ended up creating Sputnik Plenish this impact made a deep hole in Pluto's icy surface and that's what caused a subsurface ocean to come up over time. The nitrogen ice settled on top of this ocean which tells us that this liquid ocean might have come from a fast and violent beginning for the planet because of this. Many researchers think that Pluto might still be geologically active when they observed the cracks on Pluto's surface. They found out that these fissures ran for hundreds of miles into the planet's icy surface and were around 2.5 m. Deep scientists believe these fissures were formed because of a freezing ocean beneath the surface because when water freezes it expands creating pressure and cracking the icy shell. However, if the temperature drops enough the ice can contract again and 3D models of 
The planets show that Pluto does have the right conditions to make this happen even though there are no signs of contraction yet these cracks suggest that the ocean is still freezing which is possibly causing new faults today if Pluto is active like this it might mean that other dwarf planets in the Kuiper belt could have oceans too which could create more habitable places in our solar system while the ocean might still exist today it's likely isolated in most areas by about two. 100 miles of ice so it probably doesn't touch the surface but we do have reason to believe that in the past it might have leaked through volcanic activity called cryovolcanism the thing is while Pluto could have been and might still be volcanically active it's still nothing compared to Earth's volcanoes instead of hot molten lava like on Earth Pluto might have had cryo lava which is a slushy cold material that once flowed over its surface the dwarf planet's mountains called Rimons and Pickermons might be the Mouth of these cryovolcanoes and areas like Viking Terra and Virgil FY also show signs of cryo lava flow. In fact, the data from the New Horizons probe also showed evidence of ammonia rich frozen lava has also lately been seen rising. From the mountains, suggesting that NASA's assessment that Pluto is changing actively is accurate. In addition to volcanic eruptions, it appears that glaciers are still sculpting Pluto's surface. Pluto has glaciers made mostly of nitrogen ice that flow down from the highlands into the basin. These glaciers carve valleys as they move and are probably influenced by cycles of nitrogen ice turning into vapor and then freezing back onto the surface unlike Earth's. Glaciers, if these glaciers melt, they'll rise to the top because liquid nitrogen is less dense than solid nitrogen, which could even cause jets or geysers to erupt. Also, some of Pluto's surface is made of less dense water ice so as Glaciers move chunks of water ice may rise up like icebergs too, but there's something unique happening on Pluto's giant glacier. Remember when we talked about Sputoplano? Well, if you take a closer look at it, you'll notice strange shaped patterns in the ice, which are each about six miles wide. Even though these polygonal shapes resemble cells under a microscope, they're actually proof of Pluto's internal heat trying to escape from beneath the glacier and creating bubbles of rising and sinking nitrogen. Ice like a lava lamp at the same time warm ice moves up in the middle of these cells while cold ice sinks along their margins because of how rare these convection cells are they're unlike anything we've seen on Earth's glaciers or anywhere else in our solar system even though. Pluto is really cold and far away its icy heart also known as the Tombol Regio has a daily cycle that drives its atmosphere and climate every day nitrogen ice in this heart-shaped region turns from ice to vapor in the sunlight and then freezes back at night the nitrogen winds circulate around Pluto at speed speeds of up to 20 miles per hour and move in a westward direction which is opposite to Pluto's eastward spin when these winds hit the rugged edges of Pluto's heart it explained the streaks on the western side of Sputnik Plano which is quite surprising considering Pluto's atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's along with liquid oceans trapped under nitrogen ice volcanic eruptions and glaciers along the western side of Sputnik Plena, Pluto also contains hundreds of dunes that stretch for roughly 45 million kilometers. These dunes appear to have formed recently and despite Pluto's weak gravity, thin atmosphere, and extremely cold and frozen surface, they require microscopic particles and strong winds to lift and transport sand or similar particles. While most planets and moons have many small craters, Pluto and its moon Khan are different in that they mostly only have large ones. This surprised scientists because fewer small craters means there are fewer small objects in the Kuiper belt, but despite this, this discovery gives us clues about how the solar system formed and what compounds came together to build larger planets like Earth. Images from New Horizons also revealed two distinct features on Pluto's moon. Pluto managed to create dunes somehow, and scientists believe that they may be made of methane ice particles blown by winds from nearby ice mountains. Karen, one of them was rocky and hilly and the other spread out like a large plain. According to NASA, Karen's surface formerly supported an ancient ocean that froze and expanded, creating the terrains that are seen today. Pluto used to be just a fuzzy, tiny telescopic dot, but its northward expansion produced the craggy mountains and a gigantic cryoflow. Now, Pluto is home to a vast array of breathtaking natural features. Our understanding of the planet and its moons has been greatly enhanced by the New Horizons mission. However, what do you think? Will NASA decide to revoke Pluto's planet status once more? Are there any more mysteries hidden in the dwarf planet's stunning architecture? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. We'll see you in the next one. In the future, many thanks. And good luck. You.